Hey guys, welcome back to another McFarlane Spawn action figure review. Today we're checking out Commando Spawn, a variant from the Mortal Kombat 11 video game. On the back of the box we have some generic Mortal Kombat art featuring Scorpion with no other information on the back. We can see that I also found them for super cheap on sale. And on the side we have the same artwork just zoomed in with the Mortal Kombat logo. Removing the figure from the package is easy to do without having to tear open any of the cardboard or plastic. But like the rest of McFarlane's releases, the stand is attached to the box held up by plastic glued onto the box. Spawn, in his previous human life, was one of the US military's top soldier and greatest assassin, proficient with all weapons. After being sent to hell and turned into a hell spawn, Spawn learns that if he uses up all of his necroplasm power, he gets sent back to hell. Since Spawn still retains his skill and knowledge of weaponry from his past life, he equips himself with all sorts of weapons to attack his enemies instead of using up all of his necroplasm power. This version of Spawn is based on the Mortal Kombat 11 video game skin, Dark Ages. Many different styles of Commando Spawn have been drawn and made as figures, with the Dark Ages version being a more modern take on the outfit. Let's take a look at some of the details. Commando Spawn has the familiar face with large white blades covering his skin tight black mask. Glowing green eyes are surrounded by a dark eye shadow with the rest of the lower face completely covered by a red bandana, sculpted in large folds and wrinkles and giving it a cloth like effect. A large collar from the cape covers both sides of the head in a cracked leather effect with a dark black wash showing off the details in the leather. And like all the other Spawn figures, the green paint on the figures are UV reactive and glow. More wrinkles and scars can be seen on the suit on the back of the head, as well as more of that wrinkled bandana wrapping around the neck. We have a ton of detail going on at the chest, starting out with the grey straps across the chest holding the belt of rifle ammo, two grenades, both brushed with the silver paint. Underneath we have Spawn's suit but formed into a more tactical bulletproof vest style with the large white M spread across the plates of armor as seen across all Hellspawn. Resting on top of the chest, we have two small silver skulls and the chain holding up the cape. Spawn's iconic red cape completely covers the back. Sculpted in a cracked leather effect, large sections of the cape are sculpted in wrinkles, folds, and large rips and tears in the leather. A light coat of black wash is applied here with some of the cracks appearing darker, showing up the small details in the sculpt. The cape reaches all the way down to the ground, with the cape becoming more damaged towards the bottom. Throughout the cape, large torn strips are layered over each other ending in large shreds. We continue with more of that bulletproof style armor in the shoulders, where the suit has hardened into large plates of armor covering the muscles. More grey straps are wrapped around the biceps, breaking up all that black appearance of the suit. The right arm has the iconic spiked armored gauntlet that Spawn is usually seen with, in a heavy coat of black wash that makes the red armor and silver spikes look muddy and dirty. Well the left hand has a smaller spiked armor here, less bulky with smaller spikes, more straps and the hands are wrapped in a red cloth. More of the black wash is applied here heavily making the hands appear coated with soot. A large silver skull acts as a belt buckle attached to a large grey belt strapped around the waist. The suit is pretty plain here with all the black armor smooth only having a white stripe from the chest end here. Lifting up the cape we get a better look at the back of the figure with only a few details like the rest of the belt and a few panels in the armor. More grey straps wrap around the right thigh with the ammo belt of small rifle grenades are strapped onto the belt. Underneath the spawn suit covers the leg and large plates of black armor clipped into each other. The left thigh is strapped with a grey gun holster with a small black gun sculpted in unable to be removed. Just like the arms, the right side armor is much bigger with Commando Spawn having its iconic large armored red boot. Detailed with spikes breaking out of the boot, large red stacks of armor and the small opening for the foot, this area is heavily covered in a black wash, bringing out the cracks, dents and slashes in the armor. On the left leg the red armor here is much smaller, wrapping around the legs with smaller spikes randomly sticking out all around. And we wrap up the detail with the boots. A standard army style black hiking boot with a small plate of red spawn armor on top. The shoe has some fine details like the soles of the boots having their own sculpted ridges in the rubber and different padded sections of the boot. Let's take a look at the articulation. We have the standard ball joint at the neck with great upward and downward range but the bandana is restricting most of the churning unless you bend the neck upward and force it. 
ball jointed shoulders that let you open and fully rotate the arms with a bit of range for the shoulder to bend in and out. We have rotation at the bicep and double jointed elbows with the armor stopping a tight range. Wrists that rotate and bend up and down. A ball joint at the chest that allows great backward bending with minimal crunching. And a second ball joint at the waist allowing rotation with the combined joints allowing a great range of backwards bending yet still no forward crunch. We have excellent thigh range being able to fully bend outwards, forward and back. More great range at rotating thighs. Double jointed knees that once again don't have the tightest range. Ankles that bend up and down and twist with the boot restricting one of the foot's rotation. Next to a few McFarlane spawn figures, Commando spawn is the exact same height next to the other spawn figures with this slightly bulkier body adding no additional height. Next to Hasbro's 6 inch size, McFarlane makes all these figures look really small by comparison, with even the larger end of Hasbro's 6 inch still being about a head's worth of height short. Next to Mythic Legions, that run on the taller end of the 6 inch scale, McFarlane's spawn series just has a bit of an advantage, but nothing too out of place. For the accessories, we get a pair of Necroplasm effects, one for each hand. Each effect has a grip for the hands, so they can easily slide onto them and be held in place. And we have the standard McFarlane stand with the Mortal Kombat logo on it. Somehow, Commando Spawn completely flew by me when it was released, or I confuse its release with the statue version, but after a year, I find him randomly on sale for an incredible price. Spawn has always reverted back to using guns in many fights and situations, so I'm really glad to finally have a version of him fully equipped with a tactical suit. It's actually really interesting picking up a figure from a year ago. So much has changed with how McFarlane handles the paint, and this figure has a ton of black wash on it, and it's actually noticeable. I feel like that's exactly what the newer releases are missing for McFarlane, the last touch up of effects that really makes the sculpting pop. While Commando Spawn is a bit bulkier due to all the equipment and the cape, I'm really impressed with the range this character can get. But like all spawns with the cape, I wish it was detachable to get some crouching poses. For the accessories, we just get two Necroplasm blades seen on the other versions of the Mortal Kombat spawns. It's kind of a letdown since we would all expect the Commando to come with some guns so you have to borrow a few from your other characters if you have them. It's a shame the pistol sculpted onto the thigh isn't removable as well, as they would be on later releases like the Soul Crusher figure. I do have to mention again how well the paint was on this figure. The black wash and silver effects painted on the bullets and skulls is definitely something McFarlane wouldn't do currently, especially on the recently released Wave 5. I didn't really think I would consider picking up some of the older past releases, but finding this figure in the wild on sale, it's kind of made me change some of my perspective. Maybe I should hunt down a few that I missed. While Commando Spawn has been drawn and made into a figure many different times in different styles, this modern version from Mortal Kombat 11 game really looks great and adds a nice base to use up all the extra weapons you might have lying around. It's a great figure for that hardcore Spawn collector that needs to have them in every style. But I have to say, even at retail price, this is one great figure, especially if you can load them up with some guns. If you're familiar with the Mortal Kombat 11 line of spawn figures, you'll definitely know what you're getting into with this figure. Bulky but poseable, some excellent paint, and that level of McFarlane detail that we all know and love. I'm kinda kicking myself that I didn't pick this up sooner, but I got lucky, and it's a great add to my collection. And if you missed out on it, you might want to reconsider, especially if you can find him at a department clearance store like I did. Alright guys, that's it for this review. More reviews are coming out soon, so check out my other reviews or leave a comment while you wait.